guys, welcome back! As you know, last year I finally got my hands on a ZX Spectrum Plus 3, one of my childhood dreams! So, are you interested in knowing more about this amazing machine and some of the best games to play on it? Come along, let's take a look! 1984 was the year when I had my first contact with a ZX Spectrum, the Rubber Kid 48K. I was 9 by then and I had practically no clue of what it was about. It looked like a toy, a friendly and quite fascinating toy connected to a TV that ended up grabbing my attention. It was mysterious, we needed to type things and plug a tape recorder to get it to do stuff. Three years later that obligation simply vanished when Amstrad bought Sinclair Research and brought the first ZX Spectrum with an incorporated tape recorder. The grey 128K Plus 2 was introduced in the market and was a huge sales success. And taking advantage of that, Amstrad soon realized that it was the time to also bring a disc-based ZX Spectrum, just like their own CPC-6128. And so, the Plus 3 was born. The first impact is the return of the black color, so particular to old Clive's ZX Spectrums and as said, instead of a tape recorder, was time to bring a disk drive, the same 3-inch disk drive that also equipped Amstrad's own CPC-6128 mentioned earlier and the 664 prior to that. And because of the inclusion of the disk drive, a disk operating system was also needed, so extra ROM was fitted onto the Plus 3. The manual is a beast of a book that covers every aspect of this machine and completely different from the ones from all other Spectrum models that came before the Plus 3. The disk drive is obviously its central focus and this 330 page book was also bundled with the successor of the Grey Plus 2, the Plus 2A. It isn't perfect, far from that, but by that time it practically ditched the need of having other Spectrum related books. Six games came bundled with the release of the Plus 3 on one single disc and from Ocean Software that always supported the Spectrum 128K since its first model, the well-known and extremely coveted Spanish Toast Rack. And as you know, going from cassette tapes to floppy disks was a huge leap when it comes to loading speeds. Instead of waiting 11 minutes and 20 seconds for Batman the movie to load from the real cassette, from this it would take about 15 seconds. And from my newest find, the Div IDE, the wait is reduced to just 4 seconds of loading time and completely error free. Whoever had a plus 3 back in late 80s, going back to cassettes was a mission that they wouldn't accept. I can comprehend that now, over 30 years later. Being Ocean Software a major supporter of the 128K, all their new games would have a 128K version, mainly incorporating amazing music in their respective menu screens and even throughout the whole game. As mentioned before, Batman the Movie is a great example of that and taking only a few seconds to load would back then look like science fiction. As told in many of my other ZX Spectrum related episodes, this is one of my favorite games ever made. Wackle Man was also one of my most played racing games back in the day and the 128K version would offer this amazing tune in the main menu. By then, the brand Imagine was already in the hands of Ocean and the game's graphics engine was so good that it ended up being used in the arcade conversion of Chase HQ to create this amazing smooth scrolling on the specy. And talking about Chase HQ, the 128K version would also load all levels at once, but from tape it would take too long. The disc format was indeed a blessing for those huge 128K titles. And 
And we can talk about these three without mentioning Robocop, it's one of the greatest titles for the ZX Spectrum that was number one for a year and a half. In 2017 I've uploaded a complete history video about this amazing game, so feel free to check it out to know more about its peculiar development process. As I've mentioned previously on many other occasions, Ocean Software was a major supporter of the 128K since the beginning, releasing all their new and future titles not only in 48K, but also in an announced 128K version of their astonishing creations. Other examples are, for instance, The Untouchables, Combat School and Cabal. In late 80s and early 90s, Ocean even started to develop and release 128K exclusive games like Where Time Stood Still, Adidas Championship Football, The Addams Family, Robocop 2, Total Recall and Pang, just to name a few. Obviously that all other major software houses would board that same train and publish amazing games that would take advantage of these now highly coveted machines. Continental Circus, Exelon, Elevator Action, Enduro Racer, an avalanche of dizzy titles, Turrican 2, Time Scanner, Cybernoid 1 and 2, etc, etc. As said before, the Plus 2A was in the meanwhile also introduced in the market during 1987 as the replacement of the grey Plus 2 and as an alternative to the more expensive Plus 3. By 1987 the Plus 3 would cost around £249, £670 in 2017 using historic inflation rates, blank discs would go for about £2 and games around the £15 mark. Way too expensive for most people that wanted to use the Plus 3 exclusively for games. Even so, Amstrad stated that by the end of the 80s, 15% of Specky users owned a Plus 3. In late 1990, the Plus 3 ended up being discontinued because Amstrad's own and much more expensive CPC 6128 Plus was arriving in time for Christmas of that year. A sad day for specky lovers and Plus 3 owners. The Plus 2, on the other hand, would continue to be manufactured with a revised edition and now known as the Plus 2B, now ditching the possibility to plug an external disk drive. So guys, hope you've enjoyed this look onto one of the most iconic speckies ever released. It was indeed science fiction, going from slow and unreliable cassette tapes to high speed and feature proof floppy disks. And back in 1987, at school, whoever owned a Plus 3 was seen as a sort of god that came from the future, bringing this high tech equipment and making everyone jealous of being able to load games in less than 10 seconds. I'm really glad that I managed to get one of these in practically mint condition and with a div IDE, it's that kind of magic. Again, if you've enjoyed this video, like, comment, share, subscribe and click that bell icon so that you're notified when a new video becomes available. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you all in the next episode.